Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Nicholas, and I will make a, a presentation about uh, Tesh automation on for for Tron legacy software. So, and how in our company we uh, reach that uh, uh, the, the 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 idea that we have to uh, create a new framework for doing test automation. But the main problem with automation is how to continuously develop a software with small teams and frequent releases uh, planned, minimizing, minimizing bug creation and avoiding unwanted uh, result changes. So that's the core of the, the, the situation here. Uh, and this problem is actually so so big, uh, so big, uh, a big deal uh, for small teams and, and for Tron uh, development teams because it's hard to 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 increase the code of something that's already old because the the, the programs will not be the same over the time until we get it's, uh, very changes and let, let take, let's take my example I, I integrated the the, uh, the team in my company of a software that that had uh, about thirty years of coding. And I, I am the, the main coder of it, just a, a little part of it. So uh, how I can be sure that if I do something to the code, that the code will work properly. So uh, testing in general is a necessary step to launch, or, to launch new or reviewed software. The development team must be sure that the software will perform as intended. So new functions must yield proper results. And new functions cannot break previous functions that already exist in the code. Uh, bug fixes cannot create new bugs. So uh, although sometimes when you fix some bugs, you actually discover some old and hidden bugs that were not uh, reachable before. Um, testing is usually a repetitive task. So uh, you generally, you just take some batch of uh, F F examples. You just run the... Uh, your binary over it, and you analyze the results. You say, oh, "Okay, that's that's cool. that's uh, nice. That I was expecting that results." So, if you do something over time repeatedly, you can just make the computer do it for you. Uh, if uh, the, the 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 test step is done by a computer, and the computer do is uh, does it uh, with some automation uh, at some time interval. Uh, that be called, it can be called automated testing. So a, a, a programmer will just send the code to a computer. The computer will run the, the, the batch test and will give the results back to the user. And it's important that the computer will actually assess those results of passing or not, not relying on the humans for that. And there are several, several techniques in software engineering that can be used um, to test programs like smoke testing, unit testing, integration testing, functional testing, keyword testing, regression testing, data driven testing, black box testing. And I will put this link of Microsoft that has a, a really nice table of several kinds of testing and uh, why you, 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 when you need, you need those testing and uh, how you do it with some, uh, with some resources. Um, but for further applications, let's consider just unit testing and block, black box testing because they will, will uh, cover the most uh, of our problems. Uh, in general, every test will compare the observer output of a system with the expected and previously saved output of those uh, of those inputs. So um, let's take uh, unit testing. What is unit testing? So the unit testing uh, evaluates the individual components of a software. Uh, so you, you, you like to see the outputs of functions and subroutines. Uh, if uh, the, a function receives A and, and it evaluates B, you, you see if the, the, these result B is kept in cons consistent across the, the, the changes you made the code. Uh, so it's a, actually a good practice to implement new code with unit testing in mind because uh, if something changes in that function by you, by someone else, uh, you can rapidly see that uh, this, uh, 
this little change made the new bug or, 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 or make an unexpected result. So pure and elemental functions are actually good candidates for your testing, but it's not a formal or even formal requirement. It's just a sufficient requirement. You know? If you, you have a per function or elemental function, you can have a unit testing for it. Uh, let's take this example. It's a function that converts data, uh, data uh, timestamp né, into a, uh, uh, functions that convert data in general, like this timestamp function here. It's a actually strong candidate for testing. So this uh, this function here it converts uh, a timestamp in, in human readable formats uh, to a real epoch format. And this function is not actually pure because it relies on some global data of the, the time of the, the, the computer, et cetera. But uh, in general, it's mostly pure. So uh, this is a kind of function that works well with, with unit testing. And, and we have the another kind of testing that we actually most use it in some uh, for, 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 for developments. It's actually used in my company, um, Informally, among the developers, uh, this, uh, that works like you, 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 you take uh, some input data, uh, some case for study, some uh, something that you know the results, you pass through the code, and the code will produce uh, some report, and you compare the, the you analyze the, those reports to see if the code is doing what you are expecting. Um, and the, the core of this, this kind of testing is the opposite of the other one. The other one, you, you took the very little things in the code. And this, you take the macro vision of the code because you don't see the code itself. but just run it. So uh, the, the, the black box test will examine and examines the functionality of application without peering into its internal structures or workings. Uh, not in our experience, is the most common technique used for Fortran, uh, for testing for, for Fortran programs. Um, the user gives an input to the binary file, to the binary, and analyzes the output files of the program. It's usually necessary to have a file parsers, a differ for most evaluations. Ideally, this, uh, the output will have no difference from the real file. In practice, some deformation is unique to each run, like timestamps, computation time. So you have to adjust a little bit of this parser because you can't have uh, too tight comparison like that. The, the, the reports will probably not be the, exactly the same. You have some minor things that you, you have to ignore. And other thing that may happen is that some calculations may float a little bit when performing different processors, different uh, operational systems or different architectures. architectures. So, um, uh, automated, test, automated tests is also a really important thing in continu continu continuous integration systems like Tinsidio Jenkins. So, uh, and, and this kind of, of systems uh, relies on this, this simple uh, build chain. You compile the project, you test the compiled compile binary, and you produce our, our pack they solve. Uh, and this process is actually very, very useful for development teams because you can fast detect errors and like in the build and test steps, and you usually have the installers ready for distribution. So let's take a actually real, real, real life example uh, of two weeks ago that happened to me. I was little me being happy to the, to develop a new model for my program. Um, th this model has uh, identifier number 47. And I make this model, I just, I commit it. Uh, in the, the agent of the cloud, it tries to build the project, the build was okay. So I had, I had done not, I just commit the, the enough code to the code to compile properly. So, okay, so that's a good thing, all right. Uh, in the next step, the, the test, the, the, when you, the, the, the agent will try to test if my binary was okay. Uh, I had some fail in, in, in the unit testing for model 46. So I had, why I break the mo other model? Uh, what's wrong? So I just analyze my commit. And they say, oh, here, uh, I was trying to add some uh, ID for 47 and I just mis mis uh, mistyped it for 46. So, okay, 
I just made a mistake for something that's already working. And because I have automated testing, it's detected for me. So I could run back and make my correction and uh, that uh, I avoid a, a future bug in my distribution releases. So uh, how we can make e testing in Fortran? There is a, actually uh, some alternatives um, that we tried that in the beginning 2014 and we just ignored it because that was not in sufficient for us. So when we, we start the, the, the testing in our uh, softwares in our, in our development teams, we just start with a Visual Studio uh, new testing framework with a C++ bridge project and uh, uh, and Fortran code because you can link Fortran to C sharp directly so you had a middle uh, C++ project to doing that for us. Um, why we didn't we didn't choose the Fortran testing framework that already existed because there is no black box testing in those. Uh, in those testing, we, we had no functions to file deployment. That's really important in black box testing. And there, there was also no Visual Studio or TCD integration. It was hard in 2015 to find help online about those those tests. And they also it's specific for training. Some of projects would C Sharp and C++ and we're trying something more universal among the teams. Uh, so well, let's do this Fortran code with C++ bridge project and C Sharp framework. That was our choice. It worked really well with uh, Team City, et, et cetera. Uh, it was easy to implement a file different to black box testing because C Sharp is easy to do that. But uh, eventually our projects were crashing when the test number was high because it had some memory problems. So we had to, okay, that no longer worked for us and we need something that works. So uh, my co-author, Mr. Uh, Thiago Amaral, just said, okay, let's make a new framework from ground. And we will just put the other resources that we, uh, that we're not trying to make something big, something universal. We try to make something that it fits our, our needs. So he started the, this frame, uh, Anatest framework um, that had some general features that I think that every, uh, uh, testing framework for Fortran should have. And so this is kind of a, a minimal guide of what a testing new framework should have for proper testing Fortran uh, environment. So this framework has functions to uh, set up and tear down or an option directory deploy where you uh, the test will run. Uh, and this framework we automatically clean up this deploy director. Uh, this framework also has a API for C, C++, and Fortran. So the tests are written and configured inside a novel program, written the language where the developer is comfortable. I can I don't need to, to program in C++ to do that. I can program in Fortran. And other team that programs in C++ can do the, te uh, the, the Anna test in C++. Uh, this program can be linked to the code on the test if this coder is a static library, or it can be a standalone program that calls the whole uh, program under test via system calls. Uh, we have some test selection that you can filter with some uh, arguments in the command line that uh, you don't need to do, to do the whole batch of tests. You can do the, some, some little, some, uh, just want to test these or those. And this framework will have the Google test output file. And with those uh, knowledge of Google tests, you see that the, the markers, the, the API is very similar to, to Google test. And when this test run, the, this framework will generate a, an XMM file that will contain the same content as Google test. So I can integrate those with Visual Studio and TCD. Uh, basic functions. Uh, we have functions to uh, compatibility be, uh, between different platforms and compilers. So uh, these platforms work compiles in Clang, uh, Flang, G Fortran, and GCC, and, and Intel compilers. Um, file system functions to create D, remove D, copy D, remove file, copy file. A uh, program environment uh, to evaluate uh, uh, environment variables, uh, functions to measure 
time, partial times of testing because some black box tests can be lengthy, so you can have some actual output in between those tests. Um, function to deploy and to deploy copy to take a whole dictionary, put somewhere, do the tests, and do the, and then clear up in the end. Uh, functions to get a work directory, uh, to disable deploy, to set how many uh, directories of testing you want at some point because that just keep getting junking over time. Um, we have functions to uh, configure the test. So strings in our, in, our, in our black box comparison that we want to ignore, it's strings that it starts with something uh, like a line of time required for, you can just ignore that kind of line because that will be always different. Uh, okay, function to time out when the test is so lengthy that it, you just say, okay, abandon it. You, you have to, a problem here. Uh, max line to print when you have black box uh, situation where you have so many different lines, you just have to limit to how many lines you want to, to print. And macros to, in, to mark our environment of testing, that test, test and then test, like just if and, and if, do and then do. Uh, functions to actually the comparison uh, for to force mess to force a fail message, check for comparison uh, 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 bool expression, check uh, integer four, check real age, check string uh, strings with equal, greater, not not equal, close, not close, and every kind of soup uh, that we can make with the, those comparisons. And we also have some kind of functions like that the Kuta command, it's a legacy uh, function that we have in our library that just run a, a system command uh, in, a, in the, the, the program. Uh, we have uh, functions to compare, uh, to compare text files in some really semantic way. And uh, the other one that tries to read the numbers of those files as floats and make the comparison in float sense, where the, the numbers will not actually be equal, but will be equal with some tolerance. So have those, those kind of functions to compare uh, in black box uh, testing sense. Uh, the usage, uh, how to implement that's actually pretty simple. The, 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 to create a test, the user creates either a C, C++, Fortran 77 or Fortran 90 project, usually in Visual Studio, but it's not obliged to do so. Um, there are declarations to all functions in macros in, in every kind of header that you can imagine. Um, you have to write a subroutine with the fixed name that on a test, that you have to have this routine. This routine will be your main uh, test, uh, the, the main function of the text project. Uh, because this function is the, uh, the function required to configure all the tests in the, the system. And, and these functions can call other functions, other subroutines with the individual tests that you are making. So this is just the new main of the project. Um, in C++, the test macro works like a function and auto register the test without the need to call it. So in C++, you have uh, some advantages because C++ can have some nice things in, in the language. Um, then you write the other functions on the macros, the functions to group and to run the test. So I have uh, also uh, the test programs must have no program or main clauses because the main program will be the, the in the on a test framework itself. So the entry, the entry point is there. So if I have uh, my, 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 my main code uh, that is attained in red, I just take everything, put in, in a new library, and I make a new project with a shell, a shell just to a program main to call one thing, just that. So it's a very simple uh, um, a step that I have to make. My old program Anatain, it's now called the subroutine Anatain. And I had a new test project that had all my, my files. And I had and I have some uh, I had this file with my main that will, will be my main project itself. So uh, I had this test, uh, this, this subroutine and a test. Uh, this is the standard for every project that we have. We, we, several projects that use a test have to do, do that. The subroutine and test includes the, the this uh, this header uh, functions to set the timeout to 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 set the, the, the black box text limit. 
uh, to ignore some uh, string in, in, in the black box setting, to deploy some files to using black box testing into the work gear, and functions to call the, the, the test routines that were implemented. Uh, how we can make a test routine? Directly simple. We have just a, a simple uh, a subroutine declaration and a test and test environment. Uh, there we pass a name for the test and what we are trying to test here. So I can here have calls for my actual functions in my code, like uh, convert A to B, convert my, uh, my string to epoch, like my, my function back there. And I just take the output and make, oh, check if the, the, this value is this, this number, check this, those values is actually, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's the equal of uh, the, the same value of the memory position of somewhere. You can make everything that try to, 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 to assess here. So uh, when we run, um, you will just run it's a, a binary that you run in simple common line. You just call it an attest uh, in this project with an attest for dot XA. So when you run it, you just uh, have every test um, that was programming to do, you will you give it a summary of what passed and what not passed with some time required to do so. When two values differ uh, for your testing, you, you will have some message like that. It, the, the macros will just cap the, the declarations that you put in the in the, in the, the calling. So it will, it will print the exactly coded uh, characters that that was there so if i was trying to oh uh, uh i was comparison variable a so it will print a is equal to a number so it will evaluates and prints the actually coded uh, word for for this variable so you can see oh my variable is wrong um in black box testing this framework would just make a differ like a usual differs work uh, so you just shows you what, what's not in, the, in the, the new file and what's new in the new file and with those minus and plus signs that usually the, um, the syntax for it. Um, this framework is, has some integration with Visual Studio when you make projects via CMake or CTest. So it actually works there in those environments for those who think that's a, a great uh, advantage for their project. It works very well with TeamCity and every uh, everything that has a Google test XML parser because you can just parse it at that uh, with the, those files in those systems. So uh, I had the I had this test. I had oh ignore test. So it's run. It's not run. Okay, it, that it's kind of nice to have. And uh, my final thoughts about this um, this subject is that. Okay, so if I, I convince you to uh, deploy uh, some unit testing or projects because you should really have those, where to start? It, because it's a, you can't just, oh, I, I, testing is nice. So I have what I had to test. I can't just stop what I'm doing to implement testing. And test is actually a going task. You don't just take your time to assess everything about your code that should be, should be tested already and it's not. We will just keep implementing those with time. Uh, in, in first, at first, you know, that we began the implementation was May 17, uh, and we just done black box testing because we already had those testings. Uh, in a sense, when we released the, the program, we just done some some evaluations, and we just transformed that manual black box testing into automatic block test. So we've just uh, made some implementations, implementations here. And over time, we're just keeping adding new cases, new evaluations. And uh, here what's the point where some uh, the, the, the words not working at all the, the Visual Studio approach. So we, we had the Anatest framework in, in February 20th. So last year, it's actually pretty new. And here we just keeping getting uh, new and new tests because it, this framework is better for doing unit tests than the Visual Studio because I can access the, the Fortran functions uh, itself here in, in C Sharp 
environment I had to create the API for C++ and C++ required for transfer. It's so it's so lengthy, it's so boring. So we actually were avoiding to do many unit testing back there. Uh, so it's a going testing. So to, today we have a, about 170 tests in, in our project. In our project, other projects have about 400, 300. It's variable for our development teams. Um, final thoughts. Um, so where to begin? Oh, start converting the manual black box testing into automatic testing uh, framework. My frame, uh, this framework was that we, we use, but every framework will, will, the process is the same for every framework that we, you want to deploy. New features should have tests associated with it. So if I implement a new model, I should implement the model and the tests of those models uh, because it, it will decrease future maintenance costs. Like those, uh, my real-time example, uh, the model 46 actually pretty new. So when I made, made those models, I made the model and the test for it. And because I know I, Try to make a model 47, and uh, the model 47 broke the model 46 and oh, because I had um, a test back there, I see that um, uh, that mistake was uh, fastly corrected. Uh, and tests should be also created when bugs are discovered and fixed, because if something was wrong and I was right, it's that uh, the point that point of the code is candid to uh, be flaky or to, to be a problematic one. So, ah, so this case present a bug. If those cases is actually compatible for testing, so you transform into a new test and put that the code because you have not the same bug in the future. Because bug fixes uh, in software, we can fix this bug, but fix old bugs that keeping occurring, it's not great, especially when you have a commercial relationship with some clients and you say, well, why are you doing? You, because you fix that and now it's going on. So uh, pro, uh, bug that was discovered and fixes should have a new test associated with it. Uh, and I finished my presentation here and thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. And let's open for questions. Um, so first questions, just a mute on Zoom. If a question, mute yourself. No questions. Then so I had a question of you. Go ahead, please. Which is, if if you know that you're going to use a particular test framework, does that change how you would write application code in the first place, or not? Um, not really, in some sense, because. Um, the, the the unit testing is actually where I the, the testing has some purpose. So if I'm I think the oh I, I want the, this kind of testing like unit test. Um, the framework itself is not a problem. Every framework that do unit testing will have the same paradigm associated with it. So if I want to do unit testing, I want I want to program my code in a more pure or elemental sense. So if I uh, I want that, I must have some requirements in my code to do so. Uh, so if I have some minor changes that I my made, like my, my, my situation. I had a program that I have to split in a test program and a shell program that calls a library. So both calls the same library. And that's minor, you take a day to, to do this, this kind of uh, change. And the other one is like, oh, say I want unit testing. I have to program in, in, in a more object oriented mindset where the things are more encapsulated or atomic in, in those sense. So it's hard to backtrack my, my code for very long, uh, for old code to unit testing those. So I just black box, black box test that. But new code, I just try to make more unit testing. So. It has some relationship, and those are the tests I use. It. Some, if if you can uh, reach those uh, the, the those link in the in the Microsoft platform, it has so many tests that it's actually important. Like we you, we, uh, we have a presentation here that we, the memory bound is a problem the, in the program, and uh, there there is tests for evalu evaluating the memory required for, for the program. If the memory is getting too high, you, you have to, you will have some problem in real case scenario. So you have to uh, uh, program it, do your, do your thing and correct this because you, you are now requiring so many 
uh, we are requiring so many memory. Some programs you, you, you have testing to evaluate time computation because, oh, uh, I made something that, and the code is now slow and I can't, then the code can't be slower. So uh, this kind of test will have some other um, mechanism inside. You have to implement some uh, functions to evaluate time of the, the, the functions. So maybe minor things, but it's not actually that uh, a big deal in my opinion. Okay, thanks. So then we have a bunch of discussions on the chat. Maybe you can chime in and you know directly reply to those people. 